Hello everybody, this is a new episode of Fighting with Moskovic and today I have very special guests, multiple guests. I will be talking to the guys who run the UFO hotline in Holland, it's called ufomeld.nl and uh, they are experts on the Soesterberg UFO case and my other guest, who is very curious about that case, is the amazing Luis Jimenez of the Big Phone Home and Celebrity Review Marathon I was part of. He's an amazing guy, love talking to him. And we will be joined by a very special guest, former UFC heavyweight champion, Bas Ruten. He's a Dutch guy and he's very uh, famous in your country. Of course, he's an actor now. You know him from several Kevin James films like Here Comes the Boom. But Boss has an amazing UFO story, which he will be sharing. So that is going to be super cool. So enjoy the show. And if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I am here with Bram Rosa and uh, Alex Griffioen. And these are the guys who run the UFO hotline in the Netherlands. And um, I think it's really cool for you to talk to them because they know a lot about the Soesterberg UFO case I told you about. Yeah. But first, let me introduce you to the Dutchies. My uh, dear audience, you are looking at Lou <laughs> Jimenez. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah. And yeah, this kid. Yes, Bas Moskowitz. Yeah. Hollandaise <laughs> sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my friend. Um, uh, Louis uh, just uh, dropped a UFO podcast and uh, a, he did a eight hour marathon with the who's who of politics, uh, you know, ufology, uh, filmmakers, uh, military men. It was just amazing. And he just went like a rocket. And uh, my friend, uh, yeah. it, 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 it's an honor to know you. Um, do you... Uh, want to know more about the Soesterberg case because these are the experts right here. <laughs> of course, yeah, no, it's, it's, it sounds like a damn fascinating case. Thank you for having me. Hello to all of my Hollandaise. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, man, no, I'm, hey, listen, uh, it's fun to be here. It's This has probably been the most uh, ex exciting, uh, some of my most exciting moments of my life, just having conversations like this. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm buckled in. I can't Lewis, wait to hear about this. Louis, how did this, how, how this, did, did, did you start this? How, how did you plan on doing this? Was this something you, you, you Ooh. craved doing for a long time? No, Tell no, me. no, I, I honestly, I stumbled into it. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I did not aspire to be, any sort of political activist in this field whatsoever. You're very passionate, um, I though. I, I do. I love politics at my core. I do love American politics. But the problem with talking, I would this sh my show originally, I was going to do a political talk show. Political. And yes. Hmm. And uh, I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. It's just too much. It's it's too divisive. It's it's I didn't want to lose friends. I didn't want to. I'm an actor in Hollywood. I don't want to piss off any producers or directors out here. You know, like um, look, man, Joe Rogan, the king of podcast is a yeah. huge ufologist for sure. For so, sure. But Joe Rogan's not making movies, <laughs> that's you know, true. like he's not getting cast as a leading man in any roles. Dan Aykroyd. You know, I'm sure. Dan, Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's a giant UFO buff. Yeah, no, True. he's a giant UFO buff. But then again, he's Dan. Aykroyd. You know, I mean, Dan Aykroyd does a movie once every once in a while. Yeah. But I agree, Dan Aykroyd is a gem of a man. I love him. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, it's a weird topic, and instead of um, putting myself in an awkward position from a political conversation point of view, I'd rather like, well, if I put myself in an awkward position because I'm talking about UFOs, what's the worst that can happen? You know, from that, I'm not going to piss anybody off because I've got a strong opinion about UFOs, you know? Um, so that's kind of, and then also coupled with that at the, around the same time I was right before I started the show, actually, I met Lou Elizondo. He came into my restaurant and I, and I served him food. It was, it was, uh, a v one of the coolest moments as a server in my life. Uh, cause I got, you are an actor. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a professional <laughs> server, really, is what I am. Uh, and um, and so, yeah, that's how that was like sort of the kickoff point to to in my brain go, OK, maybe you should do this UFO thing because it is a, an interesting conversation. There's there's ways to talk about it without it being. Look, my friend, you did like an crazy. incredible job, man, with the big Appreciate phone it. home, the celebrity. Um, and you know what? It, it was just so much fun, you know, you and your energy is amaze balls. Thank I love it. Thank you, man. I Thank love you. it. I mean, well, that's I look, we have to all come together. We got to stop fighting with each other. If you if we plan on getting any information like we we have to this pointing at each other's got to stop. We got to start pointing up. Yeah, got to start pointing up and uh, and we got to come together on the common ground. I mean, look, this is like any other political movement in the history of man. It's all about bringing people together. If you want to make change, you have to do it in one voice. So that was the idea. You know, that was the inspiration. And and I would listen to a lot of podcasts and shows and they would always end with, you know, call your representatives. <laughs> But it wasn't inspiring and they didn't tell you how to do it. You know, the beautiful thing about my event is you don't have to want to call about ufos to use my website you can use my website to call about any political issue you want yeah but you um, are really is, connecting everyone and of course and the cool course, thing yeah. is you know you don't even disqualify like critics you know you just bring people together and they get to talk to each other i don't care who you are i do not care who you are if you think that the government has more information and you want to amplify your voice to let them know please come with me. he even let us danish people in it was amazing mm. yeah. yeah of course how could i not how can i not he called me danish <laughs> yeah. i did i did i called up danish and i called the people of uh holland the, the Ho what did i say the holland days the holland days <laughs> which is a sauce I, I, it's a sauce it's something you put on eggs yeah uh, but it is delicious look uh <laughs> lewis i'm gonna stop talking for uh for a minute i want uh, yeah. these guys to interact with you all right let's go let's do it I heard on the big phone home or the recap, I, I don't remember, that you liked to hear the, uh, the point of the American side of the story of the mm -hmm. UFO of Susterberg. The, the, the problem is with, um, with that part of the story is there, there was a sighting by, uh, by a dozen of uh, military policemen, but they were all Dutch. So there wasn't really anyone from the American side of the base uh, that saw the UFO. Allegedly, some months later, there were some uh, American soldiers that also saw the UFO or another UFO, um, but that was never recorded or documented. So, you know, that's, that's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Well, I'm sure too. I mean, look, like getting anything out of the American side of the military, is, especially when it's another country that you're trying to get the information. Um, if the incident that is happened in another country, it's that usually hid behind a couple of walls of of classification. Um, so the fact that the story even made it out that far is, I think, pretty impressive. Yeah, Luis, I'm curious. Um, We've we, we've done our uh, like the Dutch equivalent to the FOIA request, which would be a WOB. Um, mm -hmm. We've done an actual FOIA request for more information on this. Uh, this was during the Cold War, and um, uh, we were a NATO country. And I was wondering, do you know if there's like a, another desk where we could submit anything similar to a FOIA uh, request to that pertains to NATO classified cases? That's a great question. Um, so you're trying to submit a FOIA type request into for, to get information from the United States perspective of things? Yeah, so we did that and we, we, we got nothing, basically. Yeah. And then um, we figured because it's a NATO alliance, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this was an American, uh, what do you call that? Like an American uh, operated base in the mm -hmm. Netherlands, which kind of complicates things because it doesn't necessarily right. say there's any documentation of this sighting in the Dutch right. archives. And apparently there's nothing in the in the United States archives either. So we were right. wondering if there's like some kind of limbo where all the NATO related stuff. Well, goes. You, well you, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's an American base in another country. Right. So the inside of that wall is technically America. Hmm. If, if that's the way we're looking at it. Right. 
it's almost like an embassy right um I don't think there's any way you can get information from that aspect of things, at least not from like a FOIA request sort of thing. I could be totally wrong on that. Um, <clears throat> I've been, I've, <clears throat> I haven't had this conversation with anyone yet. Uh, although uh, some people have sort of hinted that it just don't even bother, hmm. but I, yeah, I am curious if there's a way to either through the embassy, through NATO or through, um, the United Nations, if there are ways to submit requests like that uh, and see if to get information, I've been told, especially from the embassy side of things, don't even bother. The embassy just doesn't even deal with things like that. Um, but I am curious from a NATO and from a from a um, United Nations standpoint. Um, I'm wondering if they, you know, I don't think they could put any pressures on these countries, uh, but, you know, it. it it might be an interesting conversation if you heard them talking about it on the NATO floor, you know, or, or the floor of, um, of the, uh, what am I saying? Thinking about the, uh, um, it's early for you. It's early yeah. uh, for the, for the, um, uh, what did I just say? Not NATO. The, uh, the other, organization. I think you just spoke <laughs> United, United, United Nations, United <laughs> Nations, United Nations. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's worth a shot. Hmm. But there's yeah. one, the one thing you could definitely do, Twitter doesn't have any borders. You could tweet at our representatives all day, hmm. all day, you know? And if the country of, or, or the entire Great Britain wants to, on the same day, start tweeting at American representatives, I promise you, they'll notice it. And strangely, they'll notice it. Uh, it's, it, was way more easier than I thought. <laughs> yeah. It worked. Um, Lu uh, Louis, would you like to know more about the Soesterberg case? Because we still have a couple of minutes and, uh, yeah. you know, these guys are here to fill you in, man. Yeah, I mean, I want to know, is there any surviving uh, members of, of the Dutch police force that are still talking about this? Yeah. If so, has anybody actually interviewed them, like in a, in a setting like this, that'd be kind of interesting to hear you know, if you could get a couple of them in the same room to co sort of cooperate what's going on, I'd love to see that. Uh, but we, I don't know if that exists because the, the case is so new to me. Max, you made me aware. I hadn't, I've never heard of this case. I really sold it. So, <laughs> so when you laid it on me, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is the Rendlesham of Harlem. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to hear more. Yeah, I lied um, about li oh, only five things, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is about what you're just uh, saying, yeah, what you just said uh, getting some people together um that that cited uh, the ufo uh, in 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 79 um it's quite impossible because i'm making a, a documentary about it and i saw I, i sought out all the people that i could and there's just three left that i could find uh, that weren't dead um and two of them no, one of them didn't really see the ufo only only saw a, a plane uh, one of them is too scared uh, because they were ridiculed too much in in the 70s oh. uh, and one of them i got on camera but you can, you can see that um yeah you can see that in the documentary uh, when it's done but you know yeah. it's very hard to make a documentary without any funds so um, it, it, it'll probably be a crowdfunding campaign or mm. something What they did, oh, though, Louis, is uh, right yeah. after the event, they uh, they managed to gather all these 12 military men who were witness to the event, and they uh, they put them in a room together, and they did just that, like exactly what you described. Like, in the had, same year. Yeah. yeah, the same year, just months after. It's very similar to the Salas uh, story, though. Mm. Very yeah. similar. So uh, it sounds similar. Yeah. I mean, it, I'll it, challenge it, you on that, not Max. In, not in the event, but in the way the men reacted to the event. Yeah, that's mm. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Max. Max was talk, talking about um, nukes, but but oh, we don't okay. we don't know for sure if there were nukes. But well, we do, right? right. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, chances are, if these things were floating above the base, yeah, there was probably some nuclear weapons there. I Actually, I did tell the truth because the newspaper I was talking about did disclose that. No, 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 no. They they did. <gasps> Let me ask you this: what, what year was it again? You say seventy nine. Seventy nine. Yeah. yeah. How is that not disclosed yet? Like it's still a NATO weapon. secret. 
Yes, I, I don't know why that's a secret. It's it's over. It's older than me. Look, the, Louis, the, the we know every base where there's nukes in Holland, and nobody will admit it, but everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. Two bases, yeah. two bases. We know. Let me ask you: Do the do the people of Holland do they ever demand answers from representatives there? As oh yeah. Far as, Hey, yeah. can you tell us what the hell's in these bases? We kind of have a right to know. Well, not, not these days, actually, but it was more in like the 80s when they wanted to ban the, the, the nuclear bomb and there were big protests. Big protests. Yeah. On, on the Soesterberg Air Force Base, there were protests every day. And there was even uh, a female protest group that was uh, stationed there. So they didn't even leave from the, from the Air Force Base. Sounds like my kind of people. Look, guys... <laughs> um, Louis, uh, we're going to go for yeah. a break. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be back with Boss Rutten. I'm going to get you in there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, man. I mean, look at, we just discussed this on my show the other day, by the way, the Unidentified Celebrity Review. Go check it out. <laughs> um, we were discussing the Gaddy Schwartz debacle on Twitter, right? And yeah. what is going on? Well, like, why is it that in 2017, here we are four years later, and we're just now got the final nail in the coffin that one million percent for sure lou elizondo was part of the atip program mm. it took four years to get that confirmed even though everybody in this conversation is probably listening knew he was part of the atip program yeah but george knapp general, proved it way earlier than uh Gaddy. the general public yeah. doesn't know who george knapp is yeah. so you got to think of it this way it's it is they are setting up a very methodical plan i think total speculation to release information in a way that it is 100 percent verifiable because now if somebody from the government says here's some new information right and it's let's say it's mind-blowing people are then immediately going to start especially like a 60 minutes nbc abc let's be honest none of these news organizations have the researchers that really know about this topic they're kind of dumb when it comes to the uap topic no offense 60 minutes but what this does is if big news comes out down the road an organization like 60 minutes is going to start immediately looking at the history of this since 2017 and what they're going to find is that they're going to find check after check after check after check after check after check of confirmations on Lou Elizondo, on the ATIP program, on, on the UAPTF, on all of those videos, on all of the data that's been released. Yeah. It's going to be looked at under a much sharper eye and now when that uh, those eyes start gazing at the history of this they're not going to find any mistakes they're not going to find any any way to say no this isn't true because now you've got a letter from a senator who said unequivocally that he was part of it so that's it that conversation is over yeah i guarantee you we will never hear about the the uh veracity or the true the the truth of alessandro being connected to that program that's it it's fact right no one can argue that so th that th look at that and apply that to the next 20 years that's what disclosure is going to look like it's going to be frustrating for us but this isn't for us yeah. we already know this yeah i'm trying to get my mom to pay attention to it yeah so when 60 minutes goes back and starts looking at the history and they lay out that that history for my mother or my dad or my stepdad or my sister they can trust that 60 minutes has done their homework and they've done their research because we did it for them We've let, yeah let me better. emphasize on that a little bit more because you know uh, lou when we were in your great marathon which mm -hmm. was amazing uh, he clearly said you know there you know it's 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 not a at this moment it's not a great job to to cover this this uh this this topic mm -mm. but you know uh, i covered it in holland and i thought i would be the you know the laughing stock you know the 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 idiot the joker didn't happen did not happen anymore. And uh, aren't laughing anymore. They're no. This is no longer a laughing topic. And what I love about it the most is when I go to parties, when I go to dinners, when I go to events, when I go to movie premieres. You're the source of information. Not even so much on the source of information. The topic is coming up without me bringing it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
that's what's cool. So then when I hear that conversation, I could pop in and lay some wonderful information on them where they might go home and look it up. Yeah. You know, so that's what we're trying to do. And you This know what? A- you know what, Lewis? <laughs> uh, my friend uh, over here and the other friend over there, uh, they were, by the way, in the the magazine release, you know. Um, yeah. But now these are the guys, the go-to guys for information about UAPs and all. He was in the biggest newspaper the other day, a couple of days ago. The, uh, Telegraaf Today and Volkskrant, Volkskrant Tomorrow. Oh, I didn't even know that. Those are the two, two biggest papers in this country. And yeah, what, nice. what are you doing? Uh, I, I do the occasional radio commentary and uh, yeah, uh, and print every now and then. So now you have like three guys in this whole country who, knew, who yeah. know a little bit. <laughs> But we, we, hey, we've, been, we've been fighting this, this good fight like... Uh, like uh, for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For years, 15 years. 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 2005, uh, I, I started this all, yeah. Here's the thing, on my show right now, we've got two military guys that come on all the time. Jeremy McGowan and Jazz Shaw, who's a journalist and contributor. Uh, not to my program, but to other actual journalist entities. <laughs> hey, but Jazz. Both of them. Both of them. Oh. Yeah, right. It, it was great. <laughs> Jazz's wife yelled at him the other night on my stream to get off. So I saw it. Come eat dinner. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, but the thing that I really get from them and the thing that I got from a lot of the military guys that showed up to the big phone home, they're angry. Hmm. They're pissed off like they're they are tired of not only are they angry, but all of the researchers that have been looking at this for 40, 50 years, the guys that have done the real legwork for dummies like me to pick up and run with, um, they are pissed. And they're also telling me, you know, we've seen this before. They're going to pull the rug out from under us. They don't believe the government whatsoever. They do not have, they have zero trust and they fought and bled for our government. Yeah, and these guys are the main observants. They're the main observers and they're not being taken seriously and that irks them the wrong way. Yeah. It really, really does. And so that is the the most important message that I have for any government official listening to what we're trying to say. This is a golden, I mean, a goal. It is literally being put on your lap. Opportunity to win trust. Yeah. Trust. There is a big time trust issue between the American people and its government. And I don't know how you how what your trust levels are with with the the government. Oh. Okay, but that's all. this this yeah. topic is a golden opportunity for governments around the world to win a lot of credibility and trust with the American people and the and the, the people of the world. This is they need to see it as that. <clears throat> Yeah, well, yeah. you know, here in Denmark, we only have five inhabitants. <laughs> I know the president, he's my neighbor. Yeah. Um, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> but look, um, we're, we're going to elaborate on this a little bit more. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think my friend Boss Rutten is going to call in <clears throat> in about 30 minutes. If you want to stick around, uh, Louis. Yeah, yeah, man, uh, I'm here. You like I'm MMA? You me. I, I'm not a violent person. The, the I've never watched one MMA fight in my life. You don't have to fight. Yeah, I know. I know. You know what? I Yeah. I just... Yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> Look, no. I'm going to say me. goodbye to you right now, but yeah. I'll see you hello to you in a little bit. <coughs> I'll be ready. So I'm going to get... Guys. I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah. Thank you. Dankjewel, Bram Rosa and Alex Griffioen. Strijders. Nog een eindquote, nog een plug. Heel snel. Als je iets raars ziet vliegen, meld het bij ufomeld.nl. Wil je meer weten over wat voor raars andere mensen zien vliegen? Kijk daar ook. Maar kijk vooral even op ufozaken.nl. Want daar documenteren wij de, de meest opmerkelijke casussen van Nederland. Awesome. Bram? En nee, dat wisten we wel een beetje inderdaad. Oh, en vergeet ah. niet eerst eventjes, als je een ufo gaat melden... eerst eventjes bij de verklaringenpagina kijken voordat je een melding doet. Dus er staan heel veel verklaringen op. Misschien is er wel eentje van die jij hebt gezien. En als je van de media bent, uh, nou, benader deze dudes, want zij weten alles. Hé, hey, dit was het laatste uh, stukje van deze aflevering van Vechten met Moskowitz. En uh, nou, tot de volgende vrijdag, laatste vrijdag van de maand maar weer. Vechten met Moskowitz. Hoi. Oké, en we zijn hier met mijn vrienden uh, Alex Griffioen, Bram Rosa, 
Luis Jimenez and D-Champ. Boss El Guapo Rutten. Welcome, champ. You're welcome. Thank you. Get good for having me. Thank. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Early in the morning here. I did a lot of stuff already this morning. So. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. We've tortured uh, Lewis right here. He's, uh, he's on your side <laughs> of the pond in California. And uh, Lewis just uh, set up an amazing event, uh, which was the... Maybe, Lewis, you can tell it uh, to the champ himself. Yeah, hey, man. Nice to meet you. Uh, first time ever talking to a professional fighter, so uh, that's, that's fun. And actor um, and podcaster. Yeah, no, it's well, I, yeah, I'm you just, I, I never want to cross you, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just a, 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 a gathering, uh, that we called the big phone home. It was basically a, um, an event where we tried to bring everybody together on some common ground of, of, uh, of, we know the government knows more on this topic and, and, and we're going to articulate ourselves in a way that is not yelling at the government you know not asking for alien bodies or or show me the uh, craft we're asking for legitimate le legislative requests and um so we had journalists we had uh former military members we had podcasters and 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 you know youtube creators join us and we all came together and we all in one voice said what we wanted you know there was no arguing there was no bickering there was no back and forth um, there was no, I know what's going on, you know, it's just, what can we do to all gather together, amplify our voices and try and enact some, some forward moving discussion on this topic. So it was a lot of fun. Max was there. I mean, it was a lot more successful than I had ever. I always like to set my expectations very, very low. Yeah. Well, uh, so you that keep way, Let's keep when you up. blow, when you blow, when you blow them away, it's a lot more fun to enjoy it, you know? And, um, and we, but I'll be honest with you, as fun as that was, it, the work is just begun. There's Boss. still so much to do. Boss, uh, you know, he's, he's very, being very modest, but, you know, the, the former uh, Pentagon uh, 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 leader of the UAP, UAP uh, investigation program, um, you know, he was there. Um, you know, uh, we were talking to the people who actually released the first footage ever uh, of UAPs. This was the man, and uh, you know, he's backed by Senator Harry Reid. He's backed by Senator Mellon. You know, th this was a heavyweight. But uh, there's a big reason I called in the champ, and uh, that's because he has a awesome <laughs> UFO story. He told Lay it on me <laughs> in Dutch, uh, and a uh, champ. You know what? Just rip. Let it go. Let 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 the story go. Okay, so I, I was flying back from Japan from a fight. I just fought there. I came back with my manager. You know, we're on the plane. And we slept the whole way back. And we we're going over Europe. I'm waking up. The breakfast is coming. And we open the, the, the windows. And my manager goes like, dude, I love those freaking planes. There's American planes from United. Look how shiny they are. And there's a shiny plane flying. And there was a lot of traffic. It was really weird. A lot of, we saw a lot. Of, I think we saw four planes. I mean, which is a weird thing if you just fly over Europe. Yeah. passenger planes and then he looks and he says well that's a weird plane and it's it's far away i'm talking at least five miles away i i believe far away and it's a thing i said it's not a place like a rocket it went up like this and we're looking i go like holy crap man this is something so i'm grabbing my camera that was at the time i mean we're talking 94 i mean yeah. it was film and i grabbed it i opened it up and it starts rewinding my film was full i go no no no, no. and then suddenly i see the thing go like this boop and it was big. I'm talking hundreds of meters. It was, it was a giant thing. And then while it was hovering, suddenly it went and it was gone. And we saw it from going from zero to God knows what speed. And wow. we're freaking out, you know, and I go, we, we went to the, actually to the pilot. And I said, well, you know, it's, did you see this? And he says, ah, there's a lot of military testing there. I go, that's a weird animal, uh, military <laughs> test. Up like this. Yeah. Ups and then shoots. And it was giant. Like I said, it was, it was a really big ship. So uh, a zero sound, nothing. Yeah. Although, although it was far away. So we probably right. would have anyway in the plane, but yeah. it was going from zero to 60. It freaked us out till this day. Every time when I'm with him on the phone, we talk about that. 
Yeah. No, mm. hey, man, I've, I've had a sighting, too. You know, I was 13 years old when I saw my UFO, at, you know, at a party with a bunch of people. Uh, I was 13. Like, the adults were, were – I remember I, – I, listen to Ryan Sprague's podcast because I tell this story in really great detail, um, and he, I think he's going to release it pretty soon. Um, but I, I viscerally remember the adults going, what the hell is that? Um, and it was, it was close, (laughs) you know, we're talking 300 yards. It was the size of two buses stacked on top of one another. And, um, I, because I was in the UFOs at the time, uh, you know, Bob Lazar had happened four years right before I saw this and I saw it and flipped out idiot i am i started running toward it but to run toward it i had to oh, you're a go, pigeon a what a pigeon first thing yeah. they do when the car comes they fly into the wheels yeah, right into the wheels so like i i had to go around this fencing and this this craft was over a cow pasture wide open but the one the side of the cow pasture that ran ran along the side of the road had a line of trees so for me to get closer to the fencing of where the cow pasture was, I had to run. So the trees started blocking what I was seeing. And as I'm running to it, I don't remember, but I don't remember it taking off. Like I just remember getting to the fence and it was gone. It was gone. Great. So I didn't get to see it take off or anything, but it was, it was wild. <laughs> it was yeah. wild. Was it like a bus uh, story? Was it, was it the, yeah, a cigar ship or what was no, the 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 it rem- I do you guys remember and it it's actually a fake UFO story. Um but there was there was a book written about it. It was called The Gulf Breeze Sightings. Yeah, yeah the Gulf Breeze Sightings. Not it not looked, everything about it was fake, but there was fake. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of fake stuff. I remember reading it as a kid and it scared the shit out of me. But th- honestly, that's kind of what it looked like was w- the ship that was in that thing where it was I wouldn't say it it was, it looked like a bowl, right? Like a breakfast bowl. And then imagine taking that exact same breakfast bowl, making it a little bigger and then flipping it on top of the smaller one. Mm. And then it was, it was bright white in the middle and like a greenish hue on the outside. It was, it was weird. It was weird. Look, guys, I, I think the champ, uh, you know, he's, uh, he doesn't have a lot of time, but yeah. uh, boss, uh, this is uh, Bram Rosa and Alex Griffin, and I told you about the Susterberg case. Yes. And these boys, they covered it. They, I, they, actually, the article I sent you, uh, Alex wrote that, and um, the documentary teaser, Bram made that. And if you want to know anything about that Dutch amazing case, these are the guys. So, um, would you like to know more about the Susterberg case? Well, it's, you know, you hear uh, how, how many sightings have there been in Holland? Because you know, you guys know all these things, of course. And it, it has to be a lot of them. We, I, I lived there for 36 years, but i never seen a sighting there. We saw it only on the plane. I have a feeling here, this is a hill here, and everybody's been talking about this, that we do get visit here. We hear this weird sound every time. And, and it comes out of the freaking hill here. And if you go through the hill, if I walk my dog there, there's like big pieces of concrete. It's almost like the military base bought, mm. uh, built something underneath. I don't know. But it's, mm. it's, Does it's, your dog ever respond to the sound? No, 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 no. And it's also when you're looking in the air, there's no planes when we hear the sound. Mm. And it, it, it would be stupid because if it, if it are aliens, right, well, they give themselves right away, away, right? It's like when they say, oh, it was a bright light that was shining white. They go, well, why don't they turn off the light? <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. They they see. Themselves. <laughs> you see, so... I don't know. Most, most of the time, the uh, UFOs aren't making sound, so that's yeah, yeah. That's yeah. True. Well, that's I mean, true. could you imagine if we're just we're losing translation? Maybe those lights and those movements are their language. Maybe they're saying, "Hey, buddy, hello, how you doing?" Um, you know, it's I, that's why I love that one movie with Amy Adams where she's trying to figure out the language of the aliens. Yeah, um, rival. It, yeah. Like it would take a we're like we have no idea. Are these lights patterned? But then again, I don't think anybody's taken all of this footage, all of these stories, and tried to combine them and find the patterns and see, okay, is there ever a time where these things repeat? If so, in what way? And can we apply that to math or, or anything that might 
decipher it as a language or some sort of communication, you know, but I mean, I think we can disclose this now. The aliens, you know, the aliens speak Dutch. Yeah, yeah, I bet they do. Or I was going to say it could just be something as simple as maybe somebody hit the wrong button for a second, you know, and they just popped up and we saw it and we're just like, whoa, you know, and, and then somebody, oh, shit, and then, you know, hit the button and started back off. Who knows? Who knows? That's, that's the wondrous thing about this is that nobody has a clue. <laughs> Drop this Coke on the panel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like he dropped his alien Coke on the panel and started sparking and boom, you know, all of a sudden you see a four mile wide craft sitting above, you know, a lake or something. It's crazy. So, yeah. boss, um, what, what is your take? Uh, I, I don't know if you uh, followed the latest developments in the United States uh, regarding uh, Louis Elizondo and uh, disclosure. Um, no. No, but I'm I'm going to watch that uh, the documentary you sent me. That's uh, because that's apparently one of the best documentaries ever, right? So, the phenomenon, yeah. The phenomenon, that one, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, so we're going to watch that 100% guarantee. And then I, I've been so freaking crazy busy. I'm, I'm in the middle of a of launching launching a product that is four months overdue, and and it's been a freaking nightmare. It's like special molds, injection molds, and all that stuff, and it's a very high investment. Yeah, of, man, awesome. That's awesome. Busy's good, boss. Business is good. We sold out, but then we, two months, I haven't sold anything. And we invested, we're talking $300,000. It's a lot of money. Ooh. What is it? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, plug it. It's a long training device. It's it's a thing that I invented when I was 14 years old. I was a very severe asthma patient. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and nice. I, but I was also doing high level track and field. And I realized that after every attack, I would be eight, eight days in bed, not able to eat, not able to do <laughs> I would be like that wow. in bed. So I have to go yeah. to the restroom in bed. I have to do everything in bed. Uh, but after an attack, my, I would always bring my running times, which normally, of course, were my worst numbers, the, the, the worst things that I, I was the worst at. Wow. And, uh, and I always drove me nuts. And then I went to the doctor one time and I saw a, a pair of a lung drawing of a pair of lungs. And I thought that the infection is in the lungs, but apparently the infection is in the airways that go to the lungs. And it right. showed a healthy airway and it showed an infected airway. Right. And I go, that's it. I've been working out. I've been working out with resistance, training my lungs because I thought my lungs were actually doing the work, but they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made something up that controls the air intake. I think now is the guy coming. Oh, so very I'll cool. Walk inside. So uh, I just started making that ten years ago, and uh, and uh, my asthma that I had my entire life for every single fight, I brought an inhaler with me everywhere, everywhere in the world. It disappeared. It was gone. I sent it to my buddy in Holland. Uh, I'm writing over like holidays over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he had asthma. Eight days later, he calls me, says, I want to sell him in Holland. He's selling him in Holland because his asthma was gone. And now we have pulmonologists who buy for the COPD patients and asthma patients. So it's really taken off right now. Hey, what, what, what do you call those? <laughs> huh? What do you call those? Uh, uh, o2 device? trainer. It's called an O2 trainer. Okay. Boz, my dad well, is a respiratory think. therapist. Okay. Oh. Uh, and his wife is uh, a medical supply, -er, I think, of some kind. Like, they're huge in, in this field. Maybe I could put you in touch with them. I don't know if that might help you. Uh, but, but I had asthma as a kid. Yep. That was like my big thing. And honestly, they pumped me with steroids. <laughs> that's, it made me, it, that's, I used to be skinny as a bone. Yeah. Uh, and then they put me with steroids and I became this fat kid who, who couldn't go outside. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, a lot of people have, a, you, know, you have to understand that 95% of the people, they breathe correct, incorrect. They're using the, the shoulders and just yeah. know that four to six of these breaths are the same as one belly breath. Like when you see me fighting for my world titles, and winning, you would go like, oh, he's in great shape. But you see me <laughs> in the corner, I'm breathing like this. That is yeah. completely gone now. Like wow. I, you, I come out of a hard round, I'm literally like this. Like yeah. that breathing. It's bizarre yeah. what it did for me. The doctor, the first doctor who measured my chest expansion, she started laughing. She goes like, ah, that's not possible, she says. Do it again. Yeah. And then she, she looks, and she looks at me, she runs out. I go, what's going on? She comes back with another doctor. I go, okay, what's going on? She says, if I don't bring him, he's not going to believe it. You yeah. just shattered our record. Normally, they break the record by expansion with like a quarter of an eighth of an inch. Yeah. You just went over more than two inches. We've never seen anything like it. And wow. then I realized that she actually put it in a book. It's this thing. It's a very simple thing. Yeah. You know, it just controls the air intake. And it does power now. PTSD, COPD, anxiety. I mean, you name it. It's, it's working for everything. Fixing back problems. 
Well, you I'm gonna, I'm, is normal. I'm gonna put in a link here to the to the website. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, yeah. you can't buy them. So in two weeks or yeah. so, the new model was come out. This is the prototype of the new model. You see, so this is just a 3D print. Can you show me how you use it? You just pop it in the mouth and just breathe? Yeah, you just, you breathe, ex exhale completely. And then there's two exercises. One, you train your front breathing muscles. A lot of people don't know. Your lungs are two bags. There's no right. muscle in the lung. The right. only way for your lungs to open up is to expand your chest. And there's a vacuum between the body and the lungs. And mm -hmm. if you expand your chest, that opens up the lungs. So for the people who go like a vacuum, just imagine your lungs being glued to the inside of your body. Right. And the only way to expand them is to in, uh, expand. So you don't expand your chest because you put air in them. It's the other way around. You expand mm -hmm. to pull air in there. Right. Those muscles we have, the average human body has 10 pounds of breathing muscles. And that's a lot. So when you're gassing, all the uh, doctors will tell you that feeling of gassing is all the oxygenated blood leaving your limbs to go to support your number one priority in your body, which is your breathing muscles. Right. But if you work those breathing muscles out with resistance, and it's the only thing that can do it, then it becomes much better. So that's what I start doing. So you have an exercise for the front breathing muscles and you have an exercise for the back breathing muscles. The front breathing muscles you blow out, put the auto drain air in line. That's it. You do this 30 times a day. It takes about four minutes. I, I have a guarantee for people. You buy it for asthma. If it's in 30 days, not gone, I'll give you money back. That's how powerful the statement is. Well, wow. I say 80% or more gone. So like if you use your inhaler, just the guy wrote another review, 10, 10 times a day you use an inhaler, hasn't used it since the last, for the last three weeks. He says, Dude. so the proof is in the body works really well. Oh, sorry. The other exercise is your back breathing muscles. Uh -huh. All the muscles around your body, they breathe right. for you. The right. intercostal muscles are the muscles in between your ribcage. So the other one is the opposite. You're doing, you breathe out, put it in. And while I'm breathing in, I'm focusing on my back to expand. Once I incorporated that exercise, that my breathing went to a whole complete new level. They, they measured my breathing at 181%. They've never seen anything like 100% is good at 181%. So, Faz, let, I mean, it's like, that's a, for, I'm looking at that, what you're making right there. I'm sorry yeah. to cut everybody off, but I'm amazed right now. Like, that's a, that's a world changer. And it looks, you said it was 3D printed. So the cost on it, I'm assuming, is probably pretty low. Yeah, these ones we sold for 50 bucks. The new model, because with the big investment, they're going to be $80, 79 dollars That's nothing. Uh, yeah. That's, that's nothing. I know, I know. To so breathe. Well, Lewis, really, if you, if you, know, really if you know the backstory of, of Boss when he was <laughs> a younger kid and uh, the journey he made, it's quite a inspirational story, dude. You should really. Uh... No, I, well, I, I know. I, Boz, you had a show. Did, no, it wasn't Boz that had a show. No, I did. I'm, I'm oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, but, nine years but, of the show. What about did. UFOs? Oh, no, not about UFOs, but about okay. about mixed martial arts around the world. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, dude, send me the link because now I want to know everything about bots. You're going to find some funny things. Let me yeah, I bet I will. I bet I will. Well, well I mean, listen, I've always I, – I, I told these guys I know nothing about professional fighting. Here's the only thing I do know. If you're the kind of guy who is going to take punches in the face for a paycheck – you probably have had a pretty interesting life. <laughs> Fair to say. Yeah, or, or you're like me, you just try to avoid those punches and let them <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, listen, Buzz Rutten doesn't get punched in the face. This is the champ champ. Yeah. And by okay. the way, Buzz, Fair. Buzz, Fair. Buzz, listen to me. Lewis called us Danish. He's in California. Whenever oh, you please see don't him, tell him this. Please don't tell shot, him this story. Liver shot. <laughs> <laughs> i made a, a absolute look i've never been to europe right so i'm so unfamiliar with the cultures there I, I i would love to go over there and just spend a couple of months and really really travel yeah. um and who knows maybe this show will give me the liberty to do that one day but i when max came on my show he's like yeah i'm from holland and i'm like thinking in my brain because we're live right we're, we're thousands of people are watching and he's like and i'm like thinking in my brain what are the holland the people of holland called and i i instead of thinking it i said it out loud 
And I was like, is it the Hollandaise, Max? And he's like, no, it's the Dutch, you idiot. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. No, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. That's what I said. I was like, God, I'm a dummy. Why would I think that? Um, but it was a fun moment. <laughs> that will mix it up for you guys. It's, it's really annoying because it is not Holland. Holland's only the upper part of the Netherlands. See, the there you go. I explained. I explained so you're not it. a Netherlander. You're a Netherlander. You're a Dutch guy. It, it, it makes no sense. I, that's why I got to go there, so I can get my shit straight, basically. <laughs> it's not going Dutch. It's, that comes from it going Deutsch. Deutsch. That was at the Germans. This is not a, a, because in Holland, I always tell people, if you, if you ask to split a bill with a girl in Holland, you just lost your date, man. Trust me. Oh. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> I, I feel like that rule pretty much applies anywhere, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, champ, uh, let me thank you uh, for sharing everything, uh, you know, your, U your UFO stuff. Oh, Brom has a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, Boss, is, is it okay for me to uh, maybe call you sometimes and really uh, do a deep dive interview uh, about your experience? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, cool. I Thanks. would also like to get you with my military buddy, Jeremy McGowan, because he was asking the other day, about for people who have stories exactly like yours where it's an enormous craft do you know what shape it was by the way boz or well, did you just see the the flat side flat of it and it's just completely flat and yeah going, he might want to talk to you anyway because he was, was asking one, for, for stuff like that there was one element uh, boss uh, uh, told me in dutch it was that the thing actually was still on a dime for a while like yeah. still in mid air went like this and boom stayed like that wild man I, I know about a sighting um similar to that so i want to show that to you uh, boss um, oh that would be great oh that would yeah. be great i would love we'll to do see that. that yep yeah very cool champ thank you <laughs> god speed and party on god speed and party on that's what we're gonna do god speed and party on i like that and then yeah you uh problem you just uh, get the number and everybody yeah. lose it from uh from max you got we'll it do. all right thanks, thanks. Champ. Thanks, champ. that was fun dude, Such a nice dude for i a love that guy i love Such that a nice guy dude i mean and he's you can tell he's busy oh he's, he's busy. busy lewis you let me tell you time? about boss rutten boss yeah. rutten had a horrible childhood he had asthma he had a I, horrible skin disease he survived all of that he was bullied beat up every day got into martial arts had had some talent started to beat up everyone yeah. Be became a dutch <laughs> kickboxing champion and if you become the dutch kickboxing champion that means you're the best of the best because the yeah. dutch are the best kickboxers in the world so this dude went from kickboxing to mma became yeah. the champion in japan then became the champion the first the, the, i think the third ever champion in the ufc wow. this is an amazing man then he started his own uh television show as a journalist he had um he's, he played in a couple of hollywood movies with kevin james here comes the yeah. boom uh etc etc he's an actor yeah he has his own podcast now he is helping people with asthma buzz yeah. rutten is fucking amazing he's amazing He's amazing. Well, I but just to touch on what you just said, though, he had a rough childhood. And that's what I meant by mm. every every person who chooses to take punches in the face for a living Dude, probably had a rough that. childhood. Don't no, ever, no, no. I'm saying no, I'm saying Ruthen doesn't get punched in the face. <laughs> OK, punched in the liver. He's getting punched. You know what, you know what his nickname is? It's El What's Guapo. That? El Guapo, I love El Guapo. it. El Guapo, you know why? His ears are still okay. He's you know, pretty. They're, they're... He's pretty, <laughs> he's yeah, because he's still good. No, you no make stars. a good point. All I'm saying is that if that's your life choice as a living, you probably had a hard child. Like you were either. You're really, a resilient motherfucker. Yeah, well, for, there's anger. He's, what he's done is he's channeled his anger into it's something positive. incredibly positive. And so, but that anger is what made him successful. Like that bullying, that hardship that he faced is the reason why he's so focused. It's the reason why he doesn't get punched in the face because because that's his that's his fire, man. That's his I know fire. Some stories, I know some stories about Bas Rutten because I'm a big martial arts fan and I know a yeah. lot of uh, the huge uh, Dutch uh, champions from the K1 period. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know anything about it, but believe me, the Dutch ruled 
the martial arts world for about 40 years and we're undefeatable. I the no biggest, idea. the biggest <laughs> champions, the biggest kickboxing champions, uh, Ernesto Hoost and Peter Ertz, who both were four-time world champions, uh, told me stories about Bas Rutten. He's 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 a different level of human. He does unhuman things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no, I I mean, look that specimen. asthma story. I mean, the fact that you can, you can. <laughs> first of all, he's really smart to think of that. Like just from a picture. Oh. Oh, it's resistance. And as a trainer, as a fighter, he, he is, it like clicked in his brain. I thought that was so cool. Um, yeah, he's a fascinating dude. I would love to get to know him better. But more importantly, I think I kind of want to get in a little bit of UFC. What's the next big fight I should watch? Oh, the big, <laughs> next big fight is probably going to be John Jones versus Francis Ngannou. We should do like a we should do like a watch party or something, and you could teach me about you have you know MMA. I'm not sure if a, these guys like it. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. But after listening to you and listening to Boss, I'm kind of like, I kind of want to maybe watch one, you know? Stay on the UFOs, man. Stay on yeah, the UFOs. just stick it to the UFOs, huh, Brom? I did a, I did a podcast with uh, Jeremy Corbell this morning, and he's a huge martial arts guy. Yeah. And we talked he? about it a little bit. And we also talked about Boss Rutten. And by the way, he is going to be so pissed he wasn't in for... <laughs> boss's UFO story. Oh, bummer. I kind of promised him that. But I sent him the link, but I don't think he caught on. He's very busy. Yeah, no, he's a busy dude, man. I, I, Anytime I talk to him or call him, if he doesn't answer me right away, I'll text him like 10 times. Because he told me, he gave me the permission. He's like, if you don't hear from me right away, just keep texting me until you do. Or you see what you're asking me to do. Um, yeah, I, and, then I, he, and then when you get a message back, he's like, yeah, the KGB is following me right now. <laughs> no, 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 dude. He's, look, man, I have had to do a 180 on Jeremy Corbell. Like, if you watch my channel, I've had some pretty strong opinions about Jeremy Corbell in the oh, past. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. I have, yeah. I mean, like, I've got, I still got questions for Jeremy. Like, I, I've got some questions. We've talked about this. Um, but I also, I, not only privately, but I've publicly apologized to Jeremy based hmm. off of doing the big phone home right he heard about it he contacted me and uh and every single interaction i've had with jeremy corbell the thing that shocks me the most that i really really had wrong was how many times he checks and double checks he like does. if i'm giving him an instruction for example Okay, and I'm telling him to do something like because he was helping me with the big phone home. So he was asking me for verbiage and things. Not like I, I tell Jeremy Corbell what to do. Um, but when he was like, listen, tell me exactly what you want me to say. I would text it to him. And then he'd call me. He'd be like, so let me get this straight. You want me to do this, 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 and this. I'm like, yep. And then he would email me. And he's like, just before I send it, you want me to do this, 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 and this? I'm like, yes, dude. You I, can like, vouch go for for I can vouch for that. That he, is on the money. Yeah, he is true. constantly triple and quadruple checking everything that he does. Take that for what you will. I'm going to go ahead and take it as he's applying that to everything else he does, especially when it comes from information that he's getting. Now, we could talk about the information and whether or not, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's great, <laughs> like, but they, but we don't have enough. We need more. Like, yeah, it's, so it's I, a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so the I, thing I told Jeremy is uh, the thing I love about that video that you got, you and George Knapp and the pictures that you guys mm -hmm. just released, which, by the way, mm -hmm. fucking killer, amazing yeah. work. But my I did mother, talk to, I did talk my to mother Jeremy sent about, it to me. Yeah, I did talk to Jeremy, uh, Jeremy about that this morning. You know, I said, you know, and, and I even said this to Louis Elizondo. I said, we need more. We need data. We need more. We, we need, we need more. more. We, but, you know, and then he says, you know, and, and he's right. I don't have more. I know no. he doesn't. I know he doesn't. He honestly, yeah. the man is just trying his best to put the information he gets with the facts that he's got tied to them. He's not telling you this is aliens. He's not telling you that this is 100 percent accurate and, and, and factual because he will tell you himself. We just need more data. But this is some good data that we're getting. We're getting some good pictures. We're getting times we're getting Look, shit names take into account th th this thing what did mm -hmm. we have before uh, louis elizondo in 2017 disclosed those footage zero 
almost zero. And these two guys, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, you know, in, in four years, there's real stuff which is acknowledged yep. by the Pentagon. It's been, you know, it's been confirmed by our Navy and Pentagon yeah. as real. So, yeah. so, you know, that's all I'm, you know, if Jeremy Corbell was saying it's here, the aliens are here, we got to, you know, like if he was saying like definitive things, then yeah. I would, I would be like, Jeremy, let's slow down, you know, but he's not doing that. He's no. just saying, here's the data. Here's the information you make of it of what you will. And if you think I'm wrong, then you call the department of defense and hmm. you ask them, you know, like, I don't want to hear this shit anymore. And I'm, I look, I, 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 I 100% sympathize with that because I used to be one of the guys who's like, what the hell, Jeremy? Like, I need, you know, what are you saying? Like, I would get upset. I'd get upset. And um, because, I, because J look, Jeremy is a very personable dude. He is, he is, uh, he's a magnet. And, um, and he's, but he's also a filmmaker. He's, he's, he's making a living. He's got a family. He's got yeah, a also, wife. There are things you got to do. Yeah, also when I was, I talked to him uh, this morning. I think he was in his study, and in the background there was a uh, a table, and there was a human skull on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I noticed that. <laughs> and then hey, that was a human the, skull too. Yeah, and then I was yeah. watching the news, and I heard Mick West was missing. Hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. No. I, dude, I love Mick West. I think he's hilarious. He, he, did, he did have the human skull though. Yeah, <laughs> I think, he did. Well, so, Louis, I'm yeah. sorry. What do you think of Mick West's analysis of? Jeremy's pyramid UFO. I think it's pretty conclusive myself, but I'm, I'm curious about your opinion. I could tell you this. I don't think a bunch of Navy guys put tape over a, a, a night vision okay. system. I don't, th I, I don't think they would do that. Um, this is where th I, I could tell you this. When I first saw the video, my first thought was Mick West is going to have a field day with this. <laughs> he is. He's going to have, so and, he, and he did. He had a field day with it. But the problem is, is that this isn't coming from a guy in a backyard. This is coming from our Navy. And, yeah. and, and these videos have witnesses with them. What I would like to see, I'd love to hear from the witnesses, maybe the two guys that filmed it. I'd love to see any radar tracking information on these objects. I'd like to know, I mean, they've already released the deck logs thanks to the great work that Corbell and Knapp have done. You know, mm -hmm. we know what carrier group it was. We know that the footage is 100% real. But we need more. Hey, Louis. Yeah. More. Louis, I got a little yeah. something for you. Uh, when I talked to Jeremy this morning, yeah. and um, I just uploaded the, the, the podcast with uh, Jeremy uh, to YouTube, there's yeah. some new stuff, my friend. Oh, trust me. There's a lot of stuff coming. Hey, this, this month, I'm being like... I'm going to set my expectations as low as possible, but this month is supposed to be very interesting. Yeah, and I've not explode. only heard that from Corbell, I've heard that from a lot of people. I'm just going to say one thing. Mm -hmm. Triangles. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, just going back to Corbell's release of the video. Yeah. The blinking light, right? I'm thinking that's sort of the thing that everybody's like, that's a plane. Yeah. That's but what I, lights, what yeah. I will ask you how come none of the other triangles are blinking? They're stars. Mm. Are they? Because they're stationary. So they're a little parallax. But then again, I mean, we can't determine that. We just don't have enough data. That's, That's the right. issue. You know, That's the issue. I think the this question, is the fundamental. The question is that the, I, I wanted yeah. to ask Corbell yeah. is, is the same question you, uh, UFO Joe asked Corbell. And that was, uh, did the guys on the ground or on on the ship or whatever wherever it was did they actually see the the, the pyramids? And Corbell said in the report they said they saw the pyramids. All of the guys saw the pyramids. Mm. No, so not only the um, the camera. So yeah. if that is true, then the bog the bogey can can be right. Um, but we haven't heard from them. That's the issue is, and, and here's the, pro, here's my biggest, my biggest concern with this particular videos and photos is not the veracity or the authenticity of them. It's, it happened in 2019. So we're definitely not going to get any radar. We're definitely not going to get any eyewitness testimony, at least for another maybe two to five years, because all of these people are still within the Navy. Yeah. They're still working. They're still all of these systems and camera and, and data collecting systems are boys, all classified. Boys, we have less than a minute, so I'm going to yeah. say goodbye to everyone. 
All right. Um, let's continue this anytime soon. Anytime. Um, anytime. Anytime. Soon. Um, yeah. Well, thanks, Max. Sure, thank you guys. It was thank fun. You, Lewis, you're amazing, and I'm sorry, Buzz Rutten is going to give you a liver shot now. Uh, Alex, <laughs> <laughs> we have the Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Bram, cool, dude. Guys, yeah. thank All you right. so much. We'll uh, catch you later. Thank right. you guys so much. Have a good day. Shalom. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Wow, that was fun. If you like my channel, please subscribe so I can keep making free content just for you.